From Worcester, Mass, first round action on the second day of the NCAA tournament. Our first game of the day features the Wolfpack from NC State and the 49ers from Charlotte. A look at the Syracuse bracket. Our next game, Connecticut, a two versus Central Florida, a 15. Hi, everybody. Gus Johnson along with Len Elmore. Great day for four, as Ernie Banks would probably say. And this game, a battle for supremacy in the state of North Carolina. Well, we got two quality North Carolina teams that haven't scheduled each other since the year 2000. So they're playing for bragging rights and maybe a little barbecue. All right, let's take a look at the coaches and starters. Herb Sendek in his ninth season. He's led NC State into the tournament four years in a row. Check out their starting lineup. Julius Hodge, a terrific player. He was the ACC Player of the Year one season ago. On the other sideline, Bobby Lutz, seventh season as the head coach at Charlotte. He has 421 seasons, fifth appearance in the NCAAs, and a look at his starting lineup. Eddie Basden is the Conference USA Player of the Year and Defensive Player of the Year. The officials at Hightower, Mike Cyphers, Carlos Villanueva Reyes. This game brought to you in high-definition television by Harris Corporation, the world leader, and broadcast systems for high-definition television. So, Lenny, as this one gets ready to start, what should we pay attention to? Well, again, both of these teams are coming in after a 10-game streak, 6-4 and four, NC State. Charlotte 7-3, and three, you know, they have a lot of variety offensively and defensively they pretty much stick to the man-to-man -man, as we see Eddie Badsden, the conference player of the year in the Conference USA as well as the defensive player of the year, matched up against Julius Hodge. Inside Julius Hodge on the backdoor cut and he gets the basket to fall. First basket of the game for Julius Hodge at NC State. They kind of run a Princeton-styled offense. Well, they do. They spread the floor. And contrasting is Charlotte, who likes to run their offense around Curtis Withers. But you mentioned Brendan Flavick. He's a guy that's got unlimited range. Inside Withers, who's been playing excellent ball, misses. But there to follow him, E.J. Drayton, a junior from Charlotte. So here's Julius Hodge, Bitterman starting today. And Gus, the character of this Princeton-style offense is the big men come out, leave the middle of the floor open, get a lot of cuts, a lot of back doors. Andrew Brackman, 6'10", inside, has it knocked away, taken away by Drayton. And Baldwin in transition. There's Plavik, got his man in the air. Pure. Oh, man. Again, three or four steps beyond the three. And the thing about Brendan Plavik, unlike a lot of three-point shooters, is that he's willing to shoot with a defender on him instead of just looking for the wide open shot. You know how Clark Kellogg says a kid has in the gym range? Well, Plavik has in the area range. As soon as he got off the plane, he was in range because he can really stroke the basketball from deep. Charlotte's doing a nice job of keeping people in front of him. Betterman off the heel, Brackman with the rebound. Strong with the basket, no. Ripped out of the air by Basden. Inside, nice look. And Curtis Withers just pounds it down. Well, that was a miscommunication defensively by NC State. You've got to be able to keep an eye on Curtis Withers, get a body on him early, not allow him to set up deep. And then you've got to cover the passes, pressure the ball. Charlotte comes into this game with a 21-7 record, 12-4. In Conference USA, and they spent four straight weeks in the national rankings. Their first appearance since the 88-89 season. Another turnover by NC State. Withers off the dribble, and he will go to the line. All right, Lenny, what are the keys to the game? Well, for NC State, they've got to look for triples. They average eight three-pointers a game, second in the ACC behind Duke. And Charlotte, they've got to push the pace. They average 78 points a game. When they attack the rim, they get to the free-throw line, and they have made more free-throws than their opponents have attempted. So here's Curtis Withers, 6'8", junior from Charlotte. And talk about a guy that's really coming into his own. He's averaging 25 points, 9 rebounds over his last 8 ball games. 
about Curtis Withers is a true post-up guy. He does a lot down on the block, runs the floor well. You look at the strength in that body, pretty hard to push him off the block. Elian Eftemov. At Sewell, curling down the lane, wide open. Beautifully done by NC State. And again, that middle is wide open as Eftemov steps out to the top and allows the driver some room. Charlotte called for traveling. Now, those of you expecting to see the game in your area of interest, we will get you to your tip shortly. NC State coming into this game with a 19-13 record. 7-9 in the ACC. Wolfpack lost to Duke in the ACC tournament. Julius Hodge from deep. Tried to track it down, take it away. Bazden in transition. He's got Plavik on the wing. Plavik lets it fly. Got it again. And it is so difficult transition defense when your opponent has a guy with that kind of range because the natural inclination is to fill the lane, to get in that lane, and you got to still remember there are shooters out there. So Plavik with two threes already. He has 208 career threes. Coach Bobby Luke said he has the deepest range of any player he's ever played. Benjamin off the dribble. He travels. Well, again, we talked about this Brendan Flavick right there. And you got to keep an eye on him. Everybody goes to the lane, but you got to recognize a shooter that flattens out. And then that's just like a layup for Brendan Flavick. He told me that uh, before the game, he told me that his father really worked with him shooting his jump shot. As a matter of fact, he kind of did a Kareem Abdul-Jabbar, a Morgan Wooten kind of thing, where his father would take a broom and hold it high in the air, and he'd have to get it over that broom just like that. And he worked on getting his release going quickly and getting the ball arced in the air. And so far, Charlotte, led by Plavik, looks pretty good. Back here in Worcester, Charlotte's opened up a nine-point lead, and it's been all Brendan Flavitt. We talked about his ability to shoot the three with people on him, defenders in his face, and he's done a terrific job, three of three from beyond the arc. And Gus, we were talking before the break about Morgan Wooten, the famed coach of the Mather, practicing using a, a tennis racket or a broom to hold up. And when this team was going to play Luau Cinder, as Luau Cinder played at Tom Memorial, helped them develop arc on their shot. And that's why Brendan Plavik is so adept at shooting the ball with defenders on him, because his dad had him do the same thing. His father, Guy, played in football. Plavik perfect so far. Here's Julius Hodge. Kicks it out, Fetterman, with a good look. Bounces around. Those of you expecting to see the game in your area of interest, we will get you to that game shortly. And on that last possession by NC State, Bobby Lutz recognizes State's going to make an adjustment. He goes to his own. State's biggest adjustment has to be on the offensive end where they're not getting good shots. They're not even getting good looks. And yet Charlotte, again, changes defenses and forces NC State further out of rhythm. Jordan Banks one straight away. Two-point field goal, and Charlotte takes a 15-4 lead. Six of seven from the field to start this game. And another rhythm disruptor, three-quarter court, full court, I mean, three-quarter court track. And it forces NC State into a quick shot. 49ers in transition. Basden knocks one down. My goodness. The 49ers are on fire. Coming into this game, they wanted to shake off the rust because they had lost three in a row now with three-quarter court pressure nc state having trouble getting it over the mid-court line and it's really taken nc state out of what they wanted to do against the man they want to run those princeton principles get those cuts in a kind of controlled fashion now they recognize they've got a huge deficit to make up and they're going to be prone to taking quick shots and a whistle foul inside coming up against Charlotte. 14.04 to play in the first half. 49ers up big, 18-4. 
CBS Sports Line keeps you on top of all of the men's NCAA tournament action. Get real-time bracket updates and expert picks for each and every first-round game. It's all at CBSSportsLine.com. Gus Johnson along with Len Elmore. And Charlotte has 18 points in six minutes. They're on a pace for 120 points. Well, they are definitely stroking the ball. We talked about them having to play up-tempo. They're pushing it up the floor, getting open shooters, and their big men are running the floor. Wide open jump shot goes down, finally, at Sewell. The sophomore from Istanbul, Turkey, getting it to fall. That's what NC State needs. They need to get good ball movement. They've got some terrific three-point shooters of their own if they can just get them open. And a whistle foul underneath the basket. We will head the other way. Drayton may have been caught pushing. Make that Edie. So Edie picks up his first second team foul against the 49ers. And there's the full court pressure being applied by Charlotte. So the great thing about this game, obviously, with the three-point shot is you're never really out of it, particularly if you've got guys that can shoot. And it establishes a bit of the inside game as teams extend their defenses to try to cover the shooters. You've got gaps through which you can drive, which State did just then, but they just misfired on the pass. Back door, ball tip. Withers got a hand on it, and it's knocked out of bounds. Uh, Charlotte turns it over. Two turnovers for the 49ers. A couple of turnovers for NC State. Again, Charlotte back in that zone, forcing NC State to take a little time to recognize it. Julius Hodge inside, ball knocked away, stolen. Baldwin, lead pass. Now Plavich in the corner. They look inside, Edie can't hold on. And it's picked up by Eptimai. Not a real good pass by Curtis Withers. He would have been better served just shooting that from the free throw line. Gavin Grant floating to the basket. He's a freshman from the Bronx. I mean, there's a point where you become unselfish to a fault. And when you've got a good shot, as hot as they are right now, Charlotte better take it. Oh, man! With a hand in his face! Lenny, I have never seen a kid shoot the ball the way he shoots it, from as deep as he shoots it. But look at the smoke coming out of his hand right now. He is smoking. Four of four from the field. He's listed at 6'2", but he's about 5'11 and a half. That one off the mark for Grant. And Gus, did you believe that in the last game against Memphis, the one uh, Charlotte lost in the Conference USA tournament, Plavik was one for ten from beyond the arc in that game. So obviously he's turned it around. He told me sometimes he'll hit five in a row, sometimes he'll miss five in a row. But when he misses five in a row, as I tell you, Lenny, these guys are really ready to play. This Charlotte team losing three straight games coming into the tournament, and they are playing now with a lot of energy. Nine of 11 from the field. And again, in that Memphis game, they only shot about 35% total from the field. So somebody went back and held a little shooting practice. Wow. Grant. Lavick with the rebound. Here comes Mitchell Baldwin. So it's Baldwin along with Withers, Basden, Plavik, and Edie. Plavik again inside, Withers looks weak side. Basden. Knocked out of bounds, will head the other way. Brendan Plavik, the senior from Dalton, Georgia, is very warm to start this game 4-4 from downtown. Charlotte with a 23-9 lead over NC State. And Coach Lutz has to be happy. His team is really stroking the basketball 9 of 12 overall. Brendan Plavik with three, would make that four threes. Brendan Plavik leads the nation in three-point field goals made at 
So he's halfway through the first half. He's already got his number. 49ers playing a zone. They've had success with it. They don't have to worry about matching up or back doors. Another turnover and a foul. NC State has turned it over four times in the first half. And, Lenny, we were talking before the game, looking at their turnover numbers. They only turned it over 12 times per game as a team. But uh, so far, Charlotte has confused them a little bit, and they've given the ball away. Well, the changing defense has certainly had something to do with it. And let's not forget Tony Bethel, the starting point guard, who's battled a variety of ailments throughout the year, is on the bench with a, a strained groin. He's not going to play today. So, obviously, they lose some ball handling there. Kasdan from Washington, D.C. Drayton dumps it down. Edie, great catch. But he can't finish. And that's what the developing big man has to learn, how to finish down low with his size and length. Brackman, and he's fouled. So Andrew Brackman will go to the line, a freshman forward from Cincinnati, Ohio. Pretty good pitcher. Well, he certainly is. Left-handed pitcher. Throws in the 90s, was the number one baseball prospect in the state of Ohio last year. And uh, he's given, been given permission to play both sports here at NC State. But the way he's been playing of late, you can bet Herb Sendak is going to do everything he can to talk him into focusing on basketball full time. Last two games, Brackman's averaged about 15 points a game. He's a hustler. He's the kind of guy that um, brings you an awful lot of energy when he's on the floor, even with that big body. 6'10", lefty, throwing 95 miles an hour. He, throws, sounds like, he shoots right here. Sounds like Randy Johnson. <laughs> 23 11 Charlotte leading NC State. Under 10 minutes to play in the first half. Drayton off the mark. Here's Brackman, brings it into the front court. And Eftemov travels. And a look at the game summary. Well, you take a look at the score right there. You know Charlotte is just red hot from the field and beyond the arc in particular. Brendan Plavik has done most of the damage. Charlotte also with an advantage on the boards. And it's been their changing defenses that's thrown NC State off of their rhythm. You know, the zone and the man-to-man, -man, the full court pressure. NC State really not comfortable on the offensive end. Withers mishandles, but Drayton is there to bank it home. 25 to 11. Drayton with six points. Bitterman leans in. Rims off. Oh, Brackman for the tip jam. And I told you, brings that energy. The young man flying, finds gaps and gets to the glass. Curtis Withers. Turnaround jump shot of Brick. And actually, that was a good defensive job by Brackman that time, forcing Withers into the fadeaway. So you see a bit of indecision, the indecisive nature of the NC State offense at times. Again, they're trying to look and recognize what Charlotte's been playing. Brackman fouled underneath. And he will go to the line, but take a look at the last play. Again, spreading the floor, and against that zone, you got to find gaps. And look at Brackman come all the way from beyond the arc, flying through the air. And again, Andrew Brackman, terrific athlete. And he's coming alive just when NC State needs somebody to be authoritative offensively. Monday on CBS, the votes are in. Find out which episode of Everybody Loves Raymond viewers chose as their second all-time favorite. Don't miss TV's most watched comedy, Everybody Loves Raymond, Monday at 9, 8 central on CBS. Second free throw good for Brackman. He's off to a very nice start, five points. He averages seven points per game on the season. But more importantly, he's leading by example with that energy, running up and down the floor, getting rebounds, playing good defense against a tough Curtis. Oh! <laughs> I guess that time. Oh! Curtis must have heard me and said, not this time, young fella. Curtis Withers. Charlotte 11 of 17 from the field. Ball knocked away. 
Baston, another steal. He's the Conference USA Defensive Player of the Year. Withers, halfway down, pops out. Bennerman goes up high. NC State, though, averages 12 turnovers per game. They have six already, and we still have 722 to play in the first half. And again, Charlotte in their ever-changing defensive style, back to the man-to-man. -man. Hodge throws it away, almost. That sewer picks it up, fights his way down the lane, misses the layup. At least for NC State, they're attacking the rim. They haven't been very successful of late, but they're going to the basket and hope to draw foul. And Withers is fouled. Brackman will pick up the foul. But Curtis Withers aggressively attacking the basket. Charlotte up. Bobby Lutz, the 49ers' second all-time winning as coach. He is only the second coach in 49ers history to reach 100 wins with the club. And he gives his players a lot of freedom. They love to shoot the three-pointer. Well, Bobby's one of those guys. He recognizes that his team has to have an identity. They know who they are. They've got Plavik outside. You know, their main go-to guy in a need situation is Curtis Withers, and he's been pretty successful. We saw that dunk. A few moments ago, the explosiveness he has inside, he's the guy that forces the defenses to change, and it opens it up for guys like Plavik as well as Eddie Badson. Withers with five points. Gets the second free throw to go. Withers and Basden are the 19th and 20th players to join the 1,000 point club. at Charlotte, and the 49ers force another turnover. And then another changing defense. They go from three-quarter full three-quarter court pressure to full court pressure with a man on the ball and once again NC State just appears as though they weren't exactly ready for it. Seven turnovers for the Wolfpack to start this ball game. Lee Meyer Goldwire freshman from Riviera Beach Florida has checked in he is the off guard now. And he's got some three-point range as well kind of the heir apparent to Brendan Plavin. Plavica the senior will be moving on. Nine on the shot clock. Here's Goldwire. Drives baseline. The runner. And air ball. Ripped out of the air by Simmons. By Julius Hodge back to what Bitterman misses the reverse layup, but Hodge is there for the tip in. It's the first basket Julius Hodge has scored since the first field goal of this game. Really, the first rebound he's had today. Julius Hodge is the only active player in college basketball with 1,900 points, 700 rebounds, 400 assists. He is just a terrific all-around ball player. Yep, and that's what makes uh, his numbers right now remarkable in the fact that he's usually leading NC State in just about every category and really hasn't gotten his game going yet. Bitterman knocks that away, picked up by Eftemov. Hodge finds that sewer in and out. But those are the three-point shots. We talked about look for triples. Those are the threes that NC State very adept at knocking down. They after, shoot after penetration. They shoot 36% from the three-point line on the season. They're one of eight in the first half. Basket, power dribble, and he's bumped. Coming up on Singular at the half, Greg Gumbel, Clark Kellogg, and Seth Davis will get you caught up on all the tournament news and have a live look at all the action going on in the NCAA tournament, plus a Singular Naismith update. That's all coming up on Singular at the half. What's your opinion on the first day? A couple of upsets. That 12-5 game, Wisconsin-Milwaukee. Yeah, sometimes you wonder if it's not in the minds of the higher seed now. Obviously, what is it, 16 out of 17? Years. Years that the 12 is up, at least one 12 is up set of five. And if you're a five, you start thinking about that stuff. It can really affect your game. And we have a 12-5 game here. Michigan State, ODU, later on. Second free throw off the mark for Basden. I like the idea of the sleepers moving on. I mean, Pacific at an eight, not quite an upset against the Big East power Pittsburgh and then West Virginia 
you know, they were a higher seed, but to me, I think they're a sleeper. They play a style of basketball, very difficult to play, similar to NC State. They spread the floor of basketball real well, get the defensive scrambling, and hit the three. Nevada also defeating Texas, and Nevada will take on Illinois in the second round. Nevada's used to be in Cinderella. We saw them last year, led by Kirk Snyder and Nick Fazekas, who's still there right now, Kevin Pinkney. And those guys have a winning habit and tradition right now. Trent Johnson has moved on to Stanford, but they're still able to play that same kind of system and stop. Betterman picked up his second foul. Plavik again rims it out. <laughs> the crowd groans. They have expectations now, Brendan. He didn't miss by much. Betterman looking for Hodge on the box, guarded by Drayton. Hodge gets the step on the baseline, counted on the foul. Julius Hodge from Harlem, New York, makes it a 29-19 game. NC State continuing to fight to get back into this ball game. Well, they're chipping away on defense. They're doing a better job of covering shooters, making it more difficult to get that perimeter shot. And on offense, they've kind of gone away from that kind of uh, calculated aspect of their game and they're starting to take people off the bounce in one-on-one -on -one situation you can't get a better guy than Julius Hyde fourth in the ACC in scoring eighth in rebound seventh in field goal percentage fifth in assists you know as you mentioned just a versatile player and when you're in a need situation you need somebody to take over that's the guy you put the ball in his hand Hodge has seven points Chris Nance has checked in Charlotte and NC State familiar with each other Charlotte leads the series 5-2 as Baxter just floats to the basket and lays it up. They're familiar with each other, but, you know, they don't play each other. They watch each other on television. They, <laughs> they haven't played since 2000, and you hear the Charlotte people tell it. They've been trying to schedule it, and NC State really hasn't had the time. Eftemar. Eftemar. 31-23. And now NC State lighting up from beyond the arc. We mentioned before, that's a huge part of that Princeton-style offense, hitting threes and spreading the defense. Lavick has it taken away. NC State with numbers. High to the baseline. Beautifully done, Gavin Grant. And here come the Wolfpack. They figured it out. 3.31 to play in the first half. 31-25, 49ers. And don't forget the world premiere movie Sunday at 9, 8 central, spring break, shark attack. You don't want to miss it. NC State on a 10-2 run in the last three minutes and 39 seconds. And they've cut that 14-point deficit to six. Gus, if you look at their defense, a little more active right now. And they've been able to keep Charlotte off the glass getting second chance opportunity. Now you see the ball in Julius Hodges' hands as he leads the show. Wow, Eddie Baston really going up high for that rebound. What an athlete, he has four rebounds in this game. Withers cutting to the basket, lost it out of bounds. We'll head the other way. 2.57 to play in the first half. 49ers leading the Wolfpack, 31-25. Sunday on 60 Minutes, visit a place where the people have no concept of time. So how did they know it was time to flee before the tsunami hit? The story on 60 Minutes, Sunday. 31-25, Charlotte with the lead. They've led by as many as 14. Here's Julius Hodge dumping it down low. Reverse layup won't go. NC State fighting for it. And there is Gavin Grant, the freshman. How has NC State gotten back into this game after trailing by 14? Well, I think, first of all, Charlotte has persisted in pressing. NC State's deciding now they have to attack that pressure. And as you see, in the attacking the pressure, they're getting easier shots. The other thing is Julius Hodge is essentially coming alive. You know, he's been able to handle the ball a little more. Hodge with seven points on three of five shooting. And then finally, Charlotte has cooled down from beyond the arc, a lot of it because of NC State's defense. Their last three was around the 11 and a half minute mark. Charlotte started nine of 11. Since then, they're three for 11. Lavick hitting the big three-pointers four in a row. He's four of five from downtown. 
Let's see if they try to free him up now. We got a good look. That one rejected. And it's tracked down by Hodge. Hodge, nice look at Sewell. And it's about the turnovers, about the defense of NC State that's gotten him in this basketball game. 2 3 to play in the first half. 31 to 27. Charlotte. 49ers out of Conference USA. NC State out of the ACC. And that's where the bragging rights really crop up here. As both of them quality teams residing in the same state. They hear about each other and play long enough to play each other, but they haven't played each other in five years. Uh, Julius Hodge throws it away. Eighth turnover. For the Wolfpack. Well, Brendan Clavick, after a hot start, NC State's playing an awful lot of attention to them. And then NC State, instead of being passive, they're attacking. And that's what's gotten them back into this basketball game. Charlotte, a 7, versus NC State, a 10. And the 49ers will be heading the conference to the Atlantic 10 Conference next year. Well, you know what? This is one of those things, again, where Thomas is changing all the time. And at the end of the day, Charlotte, with the quality play that they've gotten from some of their younger players, should be formidable wherever they are. Withers with eight points in the first half. 33 to 27. Lavin trying to reach him. Rip it out of the hands of Grant, and he does. Nine turnovers for NC State in the first half with 108 to go. When you look at the change in conference at Boston College going to the ACC, uh, you know, the introduction of Virginia Tech and Miami into the ACC, there's so many changes. The teams have kind of built themselves and gotten ready. Live from downtown. Got it. Wow. Five threes for Brendan Plavik. And it couldn't have come at a better time for Charlotte as it at least momentarily towards the momentum of NC State. Plavik has missed two shots in the first half. He's 5 of 7. 85% of his shots come from the arc. And he is ripping it today. Atsura dials one. Weak side rebound. Goes to the Wolfpack. Brackman. And Hodge peels it back and runs the play. Shot clock turned off. Game clock at 20. in a 2-3 zone. Actually, right now, it looks like they're trying to go man-to-man. -man. Nope, they're still in zone. Atsura, Brackman, and a whistle. Looks like a foul on the floor. Brendan Plavik, though, Lenny, with a huge first half. Well, he has, and he's been able to get himself free. And he doesn't need much room, as I mentioned before. One of the few quality three-point shooters in America that's more than willing to shoot with a hand in his face. And the foul call on Martin Eady. Charlotte over the limit. So Brackman shoots one and one. And Gus, a, a moment ago before that foul, you can see the Charlotte guys pointing, trying to match up. And it looked as though a little miscommunication. It looked like they wanted to go man, but stayed in that zone. So you change defenses too often, you can kind of confuse your own guys. Andrew Brackman, the freshman, with a very solid first half, seven points, four rebounds. He's five of five from the free throw line. Make it six of six. So a substitution. E.J. Drayton comes into the game, replaces Edie. 49ers have 4.3 to get it off. Here's Mitchell Baldwin. And he will not get that one off in time. That's the end of the first half with the score. Charlotte, 36, NC State, 29. CBS Sports, exclusive coverage of the NCAA Men's Basketball Championship. We'll continue after this message and a word from your local station. Lead is 36-29 at halftime. We'll return to Worcester after this word from your local station. You're watching CBS Sports exclusive coverage of the NCAA Men's Basketball Championship.
And welcome back, 36-29, 49ers on top of the Wolfpack. Gus Johnson along with Len Elmore and Lenny. Brendan Plavik has burned it up from the three-point line in the first half. Well, he certainly got off to a terrific start. When you look at Brendan Plavik, you have to understand he's a catch-and-shoot rhythm guy, and he's going to be able to catch the ball in his spots and get it off. And you got to defend him by playing on top of him. Beat him to the spot, make him go back door, preferably inside the arc. 114 of his 125 field goals have been three-point shots. And you look at the stats right now, NC State survived nine turnovers. They survived a tough Charlotte offense and a passive start on their own offense to get back in this ball game. It's about Julius Hodge, Andrew Brackman playing very aggressively. Brackman getting to the line, six of six from the free throw line. And Julius Hodge making things happen, not only offensively, but helping to distribute the ball. Well, NC State lost to the ACC tournament to Duke 76 to 69. In that game, they faced J.J. Redick. He was 7 of 12 from the three-point line in that game, finishing with 35. Now they take on uh, Brendan Plavik, who's hit five threes in the first half, the 13th time this season Plavik has hit at least five threes. So NC State taking on two of the best three-point shooters in America back-to-back -back games. And that's the kind of stuff that will keep Herb Sender up late at night trying to figure out a way to stop him. But as I mentioned, unlike J.J. Redick, who's a little more diverse in his offense, he's got the ability to put it on the floor and go to the basket. Plavik is a catch-and-shoot guy, and as I mentioned, got to play on top of him and force him inside the arc. He's not comfortable inside the arc. Withers has it rejected by Brackman. Ball saved from going out of bounds. Curtis Withers again. Along with Baldwin, Plavik. Drayton and Basden. Withers almost turning it over, leans in off the heel. The loose ball rebounded by Julius Hodge on the rink and take to Brackman to the basket. Now that one rims off. Hodge with the rebound, jump hook inside. The state comes out as aggressively as they finish once again. Good defense on one end. Really got Charlotte kind of jumbled offensively and a nice conversion. D.J. Drayton, though, knocks down a three. Well, Drayton is the first man off the bench. Instant offense for his team. He started today. A little more pressure by the 49ers. Caused some problems for the Wolf back in the first half. Well, initially it did, but then NC State really got calmed down a little bit, broke the pressure, and attacked instead of backing up. At Soar, Hodge, Bitterman inside, frees himself with a dribble and a hard banker. Cameron Bitterman, a terrific athlete. You know, he's the kind of guy that you want to get the ball in his hands, particularly against his own. He can do so many things. He can elevate over it, and he passes the ball well. NC State has trailed by as many as 14, 29 to 15 in the first half as Mitchell Baldwin steps to the free throw line and Lenny looking at this Charlotte team they have some very nice parts that could allow them to go very far if they get their rhythm together in the first round well they certainly do they got the good inside play as well as the outside shooting inside out offense always works particularly when you're hot Eighteen twenty-six to play start of the second half and the Charlotte 49ers lead the wolf back from NC State 41 to 33. Brendan Plavik a big story for Charlotte five threes in the first half. Inside that one just jammed down by Cedric Simmons. Beautiful ball movement as they broke the fast break. They broke the press run. Here's Basden. Side. And that one off of the Wolfpack. What we've been able to see, though, is Charlotte continues to apply the full court pressure. NC State much more comfortable with it now. And they're attacking it. We saw on the dump by Simmons. But the bottom line is, on the offensive end, NC State's got to make a stand. Lavic. Bitterman really pressing it. 
Much better job that time of playing on top of Flavik. Baldwin makes a nice play to tip it to Drayton, who finds Withers with a sledgehammer jam. It almost just seems as though the Wolfpack just stood around waiting to get that loose ball. Ten points for Curtis Withers. 43 to 35. 49ers, seventh versus a 10. Wide open, Estimov. Drayton with the rebound. Boy, that Charlotte zone is really packed in tightly, almost inviting NC State to shoot the three, and it'll remain so until they make one. Hodge with the steal. Julius Hodge playing his heart out this afternoon. 11 points, four assists. That was the eighth turnover by Charlotte. They all of a sudden now are having difficulty handling the ball. Sixteen forty-seven to play in the second half. Charlotte with a 43-37 lead over NC State. A 7 versus a 10. And you know, we were talking about this before this game. ACC school, the 10th seed. You know, Charlotte, had obviously an in-state rival, so to speak. Even though these two teams haven't played since 2000, but they're rivals for publicity and for fans. And they're the higher seed out of Conference USA. Quite a surprise. Here's Mitchell Baldwin, the junior. Guarded by Atsua. Great 15-foot pull-up. Got it. He's getting some confidence in his jump shot today. Well, he certainly is. He averages nine points a game. Only shoots 36% from the field, but you can see he's got some skill. And as we mentioned, he started this game today, but normally he comes off the bench, and you can see where he can provide that quick spurt offensively. Basden down the lane, ho! Oh. Eddie Basden with that hard in and off dribble. And watch him again make the adjustment midair. Off the bounce, crosses over, there comes the attempt at the block, and Basden pulls it back and brings it up to draw the foul. You know, we talk about this young man, his athleticism. Conference player of the U.S., uh, Conference USA player of the year, defensive player of the year in that same conference. The only guy in the top ten in scoring, rebounding, assists, steals, and field goal percentage. Just a terrific all-round player. Near the end of today's game, we will select a Chevrolet player of the game from each team to honor their determination and outstanding play. Chevrolet will make a $1,000 contribution to each university's general scholarship fund, Chevy, and American Revolution. There have only been two men in Conference USA history to be named the defensive and the most outstanding player of the year, Bitterman from deep, and that's good. Dwayne Wade, Kenyon Martin, and this year, make it three with Eddie Basden. You add to your point. I was going to say, I kind of like the future now. We're talking about Dwayne Wade, who is the bomb in the NBA right now. Charlotte turns it over. Julius Hodge, the kick, Bitterman, makes the catch, sets his feet, takes a picture. And Withers with the rebound. That's a good recovery by Curtis Withers. Didn't get the call on what the officials interpreted as a flop, and yet recovered quickly enough to get the rebound. Withers with the loose ball to Basden, and he misses the jam. But draws the foul. Cedric Simmons picks up his third. 15-20 to play, second half, 47-40. All right, a look at the tournament summary. Well, you take a look at Pacific right there. One of the people, one of the teams I picked as a sleeper trying to join Nevada and UAB. We both went to the Sweet 16 last year, joined them and among the sleepers this year, even though obviously Nevada and UAB have proven themselves from last year. Bobby Lutz in his seventh year as the head coach at Charlotte, his team with the seven-point lead. Leading by as many as 14, and look at the line for Eddie Bastin as he gets the first free throw to go. Don't miss a minute of March Madness. Get live video to all games outside of your viewing area. Watch live team press conferences and access archives of games you've missed. Get NCAA March Madness on demand only at NCAAsports.com or CSTV.com. 49-40. 49ers with the lead over NC State. 
Charlotte, five and two all time against the Wolfpack in their last meeting, November 18th of 2000. And the 49ers beat them 95 to 78. Fitterman off the dribble, fouled on the floor. And the winner here will play the winner of our next game, Connecticut and Central Florida. Charlotte 49ers up by nine points, shooting 54% from the field, 58% from the three-point line, eight of 12. In the effort to try to continue to slow the NC State attack down, confuse them a little bit. Charlotte goes back to man-to-man, -to -man, has some success in his own. And Betterman really looking good on his jump shot now. Cameron Betterman with seven points this half. I think NC State so much more comfortable playing against a man than the zone. Look at Badgett right there with a little bit of icing on the cake. So here comes Hatsour along with Julius Hodge. Hodge hard down the lane, counted on the foul. And Hodge may be hurt underneath the basket. It looked like he got really raked across the side of his face on that drive. And Julius Hodge, a tough guy. Don't let that skinny frame fool you. He's more than willing to go deep into the paint against the big guys. Take a look at it from this angle. Withers trying to block the shot. Got Hodge against upside the head with a forearm. So Julius Hodge at the line. Hodge with 13 points, making 14. I think Bobby Lutz is going to recognize he's got to change that defense again. NC State, as I mentioned before, very comfortable against the man-to-man, -man, more than willing to try to exploit matchup. Lee Meyer Goldwire in the game at the point. He rises and hits a three. And I said it in the first half, Goldwire, kind of the heir apparent for Brendan Flavin. The next year, Flavin the senior will move on, and there's still a spot for a marksman out there. It doesn't have quite the range that Flavin has. Charlotte, 8 of 13 from the three-point line. Now Hodge kicks it out. Rackman fire. Rebounded by Goldwire. Pick up the two freshmen. Into the front court. Withers leaves it. Bassett thinking about it. Thinking. Step back jumper. Off the heel. Hodge clears it. Throws it into the front court. Rackman. Saves it from going out of bounds. They reverse it. Betterman travels. Good call by Ed Hightower. And even though NC State not successful on that trip, they're starting to feel comfortable against this man. They've got the floor spread, and they're able to get the ball. Betterman is the best matchup for them right now. To some extent being guarded by Plavik. Betterman more athletic, a lot quicker. So here's Withers along with... Gold wire, Drake, Flavik. And a foul away from the ball. Baslin also on the court. 49ers, 21 and 7. Finished 12 and 4 in Conference USA. However, they lost their last three games. Eftimov calls for his third foul. Now Drake on the baseline and air ball. Too many quick shots by Charlotte. What they want to be able to do now, NC State expended a lot of energy scrambling to get back into this ball game. And what you do is take them off the hook when you don't move the ball enough, make the defense shift. You expend a lot of energy playing D. Don't allow NC State to rest on defense by taking a quick, bad shot. Eftimov guarded by Drake. That's sore. Being pounded by Goldwater. This is one of the quality matchups in this whole tournament. One of the best defenders in America against one of the most versatile offensive players in Julius Hodge and Eddie Bassman. Hodge got a timeout. 12.34 to play, second half, 52-45. Let's take a look at the game summary. I tell you, NC State doing a much better job focusing inside the yard, getting the ball in the paint. And, and trying to cut this lead, obviously Charlotte really hot in the first half, primarily because of Brendan Plavik, who's five for seven from beyond the arc, but he hasn't even had a shot here in the second half. Nice adjustment by Herb Sendak and Cameron Benerman on Plavik with the long arms and athleticism 
really keeping him at bay. 16 points now for Julius Hodge. NC State continues to fight in this game after being down by as many as 14, 29, 15 in the first half. Goldwire guarded by Axor. And you are absolutely right. Bitterman has been all over. Lavick, Lavick now forced to drive. Almost turned it over. Drayton picks it up off the floor. Gus, that's exactly how you play Clavick. You're going to take a look here at Cameron Brenneman. And he just does a nice job. Beats him to the spot. Gets in his face. In that grill and forces him to drive. And Clavick just not in a comfort zone. Back to Worcester right after this. Charlotte up 52 to 47. However, NC State has been down by as many as 14 points, 29 to 15 in the first half. And right now the Wolfpack playing a two-man offensive game with Julius Hodge and Cameron Benderman scoring nine and seven points, but the Wolfpack turn it over. Well, again, full court pressure. Bobby Luce changing defenses again, trying to keep NC State off balance. They've been in full court pressure, three-quarter court, zone, man, NC State really has to take time and ultimately becomes indecisive as they try to figure out what defense they're playing against. Goldwire finds Withers. Lost it. Picked up at Sewer. Winterman with seven points. Drives to the bucket and draws a blocking foul. Look at NC State, whether it's a make or a miss, they want to push the ball suddenly because they recognize Charlotte a little slow getting back, and particularly against the full court pressure which they didn't have to worry about that time because of the missed shot and the rebound. But they've been having an awful lot of success here in the second half in attacking the Charlotte defense, not just setting up and trying to play side to side. Lavich called for a second foul. Fifty-two forty-seven. Charlotte leading NC State. 49ers have led by as many as 14. NC State, though, continuing to fight as Andrew Brockman, the freshman, tips in the missed shot. He has 10 points. 52-49. NC State keeps chipping away, playing fundamental and solid defense. And on the offensive end, starting to get some second chance opportunities. Drayton off the mark. Hodge tracks it down in the corner. Here come the Wolfpack. They could get even closer. Nice look. Brackman put it on the floor and has it blocked from behind by Withers. Again, NC State trying to attack. This time a better job of Charlotte getting back defensively to help. Inside Withers and a whistle. Offensive foul coming up uh, against Curtis Withers. He pushed off, and that's his third. A lot of credit should be given to number 13 for NC State, Cameron Vinnerman. Not only has he scored seven points in the second half, he has put the clamp down on Brendan Plavin. Well, he certainly has. And again, he's using his length as well as his quickness. The best athlete on an NC State team. And he's made a concerted effort to keep Plavik from catching and having at least a vision of the basket. Plavik being a catch and shoot guy. Julius Hodge. And the winner of this game will take on the winner of Connecticut and Central Florida. So how about this? NC State was down big early. Now they are one point away from tying this one up. Julius Hodge, 18 points. Herb Sindek has led his team back into this game. They were confused by the changing defenses early, thrown at them by the Charlotte 49ers. Different story, though, so far, though, in the second half. Well, two key moves. The first is to get his team to attack the pressure, to push the ball up the floor, beat Charlotte down, and able to exploit some of the one-to-one -one matchups when Charlotte goes to man. But the key one, we talked about it before, Bennerman on Plavin really shutting them down. There's Plavin, force one up, partially blocked. Withers had a hand on it, can't hold on. Yes, he picks it up. Bitterman. And here comes Julius Hyde with 11 points this half. To Bitterman, a 15-footer, it's clear. And now the NC State Wolfpack have taken the lead, their first of the game. Very interesting to see how Charlotte responds now. They led just about all game. And at one point, very comfortable. Looks like it's going to be a blowout. Now they're being pressed. 
and they turn the ball over. This is going to be about mental toughness with regard to Charlotte. You mentioned it before, they've lost three in a row. They may be saying to themselves now, uh-oh, here we go again. But in a one-and-done situation, you can't afford that. Charlotte started this game 9 of 11 from the field. It was that man, Brendan Clavick, hitting four consecutive threes. Uh, five in the first half. Different story. Second half, Cameron Bitterman has played excellent defense on it. Well, it's been a tale of two temperatures. Julius Hodge started out the game with only two points in the first 14 minutes. Now with 18. And Blackman, the freshman, going up high and getting the offensive rebound. On the other side, going cold from hot to cold is Brendan Plavik. Five or seven from beyond the arc in the first half. Hasn't been able to get but one or two shots off in this half. And both of them are bad shots. Cameron Bennerman, again, deserves the credit for a terrific defense. So Andrew Brockman at the line. He has four offensive rebounds in this game. The freshman from Cincinnati, 10 points, six rebounds. And he is now seven of seven from the free throw line. Tuesday on the Amazing Race teams must navigate a river maze to find an old shipwreck. And a tough riding challenge takes a dangerous turn. Don't miss a new Amazing Race Tuesday at 9, 8 central on CBS. Second free throw good, no lane violation. NC State on a 15-3 run. Charlotte has to figure out a way. Here's Basket to the basket. That's a way to do it. Give it to your best player. And certainly you expect them to make something happen. Charlotte now going to man-to-man -to -man pressure. As Basket picks up Julius Hodge in the backcourt. Basket with 13 points. That ball knocked out of bounds, and Cedric Simmons just lost it. Well, here's what you got to learn if you're NC State. You got to learn how to continue to build a lead. You know, Cedric Simmons, good shot blocker, not really the offensive go-to kind of guy. It's good to go inside, but he's got to kick it out and get it to people who know how to put the ball in the basket. As it got down the lane, couldn't finish. And here come the Wolfpack, Julius Hodge in transition to Simmons. And he misses the chipper. That was much better. That's the kind of shot Simmons, Simmons should have made in a terrific left-handed pass by Julius Hodge. Inside, Edie rolling to the basket. Missed the layup. Drayton with the rebound. He's tied up. And we will stay on this end. Well, again, Cameron Benerman with terrific defense on Brendan Flavick. Right there, staying in front of him, forcing him to put it on the floor out of Flavick's comfort zone and just follow him around the pick. So when Flavick finally receives, he's got Benerman in his face. Benerman getting a little help from his friends, but you know, the second half has been a nightmare for Brendan Flavick. Not only is he scoreless, he's only been able to attempt one shot in the second half. Cameron Benerman has been in his hip pocket. So the 49ers will inbound it. Eddie Baskin inside. Nance can't deliver. Looked like he was fouled. Somebody had a handful of his jersey. But still able to get the ball up on the backboard. And when you're point blank range like that, you've got to be able to convert. You know, both Edie as well as Nance just unable right in front of the basket, put the ball in the basket, and that's hurting Charlotte right now. After Bob down the lane and a blocking foul. This one going against Chris Nance. 7.54 to play in the second half, a one-point game in Worcester. Seven fifty-four to play in the second half, NC State with a one-point lead. Here's the story in the first half, Charlotte went up on NC State, 29-15, but the Wolfpack made adjustments in the second half, and they've been led by Julius Hodge. Well, Julius Hodge, again, in the first 14 minutes of this game, only two points, really passive offensively, but he's been almost perfect here in the second half. 7.54 to play in the second half. We have a one-point game in Worcester, 55-54.
At the free throw line, Ilyan Abdomov sinks the first. Let's take a look at the ACC in the tournament. Well, obviously, everyone is playing. Everyone is about to play today. NC State playing right now. Wake played yesterday. You know, they won their matchup against Chattanooga, and they're looking forward to playing West Virginia. He got a one-point win against Creighton. And I'll tell you what, Wake will have its hands full because they don't guard the perimeter well, and that's what West Virginia does extraordinarily well. And Withers turns the ball over. Hodge, the Brackman, the freshman. Tell you what, Julius Hodge has gotten this freshman involved early and often. 12 points, six boards. And it just shows you how important Julius Hodge is. As we mentioned, five of five from the field in this half and really making other guys better. That was his third assist in the half. But coming back, Curtis Withers. And again, this is how Charlotte has to answer. You know, they've got to utilize their strength. We've got to forget about Brendan Plaza for now, use him as a decoy, and go to their people like Withers and Basman. Withers with 14 points. Now Betterman to kick out. And Hodge restarts it. So when good things happen for NC State, usually the ball is in Julius Hodge's hand. Betterman too long. And occasionally a bad thing or two. It's Julius, <laughs> it's Julius Hodge is prone to turn the ball over in some critical situations, but more times than not, if I'm Herb Sendak, I want my big man to handle. Now have Jamal, along with Brockman, Hodge, and Sewell and Betterman. And you take a look at this offense, and it's much more controlled, much more focused. They've been running a lot, and they can use this offense to rest a little bit as they keep moving the ball and moving without it, hoping to be able to catch Charlotte out of position. Five to shoot. Betterman with the swooping finger roll. Here come the 49ers. Bastard foul. You take a look at these Charlotte men and you take a look at Bobby Lutz. We mentioned coming into this game, they lost three in a row. And many times the team in a one and done situation, they have a big lead and they lose it. They start to play to, to keep from losing instead of playing to win. And for a bit of time here, those are the looks on their faces. Lavick forces one up, short, and a whistle. That one hit the shot clock, I believe. And is out of bounds. So Plavic, 0 for 2 in the second half. But he has to continue to take his shots, keep the defense honest. That time he got away. Brendan almost coming up with the steal. Bitterman the other way. Julius Hodge sets. And EJ Drayton with the rebound. Now Baldwin. On the move, nice. down the lane, switching gears. Oh! Oh! Mitchell Baldwin. A little dancing music. As Baldwin just finds his way right through the NC State defense, and NC State responds with a miscommunication turnover. But look at this fancy ball handling between the legs on the spin. Here you go. 5-14 to play in the first. In the second half, rather, 59-58 NC State. A seven versus a 10. NC State with a one-point lead, 5-14 to play in the second half. And again, recognize NC State plays in the ACC, which this year had all the power teams, and NC State struggled a bit during the regular season, but nevertheless come back with an awful lot of, of respect by teams. I mean, for them to be a 10 seed is a little bit much. I think that Charlotte obviously probably had the better year, but nevertheless, these two teams are demonstrating they're so evenly matched right now. I don't know if NC State even wins. I'm, I don't know if I would call that exactly an upset, maybe on the bracket. Withers, Lavick, frees himself, gets down the lane, the kick, Baston, double clutch, got his own rebound, no! Oh! What an athletic play by Eddie Baskin. He just couldn't convert. 
One point lead for the Wolfpack. NC State going back to that Princeton style offense, bringing everybody out, and they're going to force Charlotte to play some defense out on the floor. Hodge, quick move on the baseline. Out of bounds, though. And let's check the CBS Sports Line stat of the game. Well, no one hotter than Brendan Plavik in the first half. And I'm talking about throughout this tournament. But in the second half, a keen adjustment by Herb Sendak putting Cameron Bennerman on Plavik. Bennerman using his length, using his quickness to beat Plavik to the spot, force Plavik to shoot over him, and just really made it difficult for Plavik to get anything started in the second half. Weathers. And he's fouled. We've had one tie and two lead changes in this game. As Curtis Withers, the junior from Charlotte, North Carolina, at the line. F. Tamal picked up his fourth. Withers missing the first. And that's a key foul. Ilian F. Tamal, really the trigger man on that Princeton style offense. The guy who stands outside and makes the good passes, hits people on the back door, and has a three point capability to stretch the defenses. Second free throw for Withers is good to tie the game at 59. Four minutes, 10 seconds to go in this first round game between NC State and Charlotte. Kennerman lost it off his knee. Hustles to get it again. He's tied up and NC State will hold on. Inside, Julius Hodge, pull-up jumper, short, and the rebound goes to Atsur. Allows them to really re-trigger their offense and take some more time off the clock. It's time becoming an issue for Charlotte, as well as NC State. Somebody's got to get some good shots up there. Ball reversal, Hodge dumps it down low. Better than there to bank it home. What a great basketball player, Julius Hodge, such a a brain for the game. Well, it was the offensive rebound that gave NC State that next opportunity to get a good shot up. And Baldwin dribbles it right off of his foot out of bounds. 3.23 to play in the second half. NC State up 61-59. The game reset. NC State with two timeouts left. Charlotte with three. 61-59. North Carolina State leading the 49ers from Charlotte, a seven versus a 10. Eighth time these two teams have met, Charlotte leads the series 5-2. And Julius Hodge has been dynamite, 18 points in this ball game. 306 to play. 61-59, NC State. Brackman misses. Hodge with the rebound. Eftemov, pure. And Herb Sendak, even though Ilian Eftemov has four fouls, decides to keep him in the ball game because of just that, his ability to hit the long-range shot. And Julius Hodge with a big offensive rebound. We talked about time being against both teams when they were tied. It's because they've taken so much effort and time to get their offense started. Withers splits the defense, turns it over. He's turned it over maybe four times this afternoon. 18 turnovers for Charlotte. 64-59. And now with the advantage in score, obviously time is working against Charlotte. But both teams taking an awful lot of time to get into their offenses. This time, NC State by design. That's sore. And there's that... Princeton style offense where the middle is wide open as you bring the big people up. Gives the ball handlers a lot of room to get to the basket. Largest lead of the game for the Wolfpack, 66-59. And don't forget, coming up, UCF Connecticut right here in Worcester, New Mexico, Nova, St. Mary's, and Southern Illinois. 
Oakland, North Carolina. How about that Oakland team? I tell you, I had a chance to do them in the opening round game, and you know they came into that game 12 and 18, losing the record. They came on strong towards the end of the season. Obviously, playing against Carolina, I don't know how much hope we have for them. We talk about coming on strong. After the first eight minutes of this game, would you have thought that North Carolina State would be leading it 66-59? Well, I thought that they might be able to get back into the ball game, but they've done a tremendous job in shutting Clavic down enforcing Charlotte to take a lot more time. They've got one point in the last three some three and some odd seconds. You know, they've done just a tremendous job defensively, and that's what's gotten them back in the ball game as a team, but also individual defense, and that's where Cameron Benerman comes in. You know, on the offensive end, he's become a threat. But it's been his defense that's really made the difference right there as Brendan Plavik has gotten no daylight in which to fire that shot. Well, Julius Hodge at the line, shooting one and one. And check out the numbers on Hodge. 18 points, eight assists, seven rebounds. He's eight of 12 from the field as he gets the first one to fall. This may be here when CBS presents the electrified story of a young man's rise to fame, singer, sex symbol, king of rock and roll, Elvis, coming this May to CBS. Thank you very much. <laughs> Thank you. Second free throw off the mark, rebounded by Basden. 49ers have to get it going in a hurry. 67 to 59, 130 to go. Goldwire driving. Off balance shot, Withers there for the tip in, and a timeout called by Charlotte. Well, that was kind of a quick hitter for Charlotte, but even then, it took a little bit too long. 67-61, NC State. A look at the Syracuse bracket. Charlotte, NC State, a 7-10. Our next game of the day, Connecticut, UCF. And we reset it for you. Here's Julius Hodge tracking it down. Finds a wide open Brackman who pounds it down. Andrew Brackman, what a game. Nine assists for Julius Hodge. Inside here's Goldwire. Brackman with 16 points. I can't understand that sequence defensively. Yes, Charlotte pressured. But nevertheless, you give up a layup. You can't afford to give away points. You want to slow NC State down. There's plenty of time to play them. It was only a two-possession ball game before that score. And when you shoot the three as well as Charlotte does, even though Flavin couldn't get off and hasn't gotten off in the second half, you're not out of the ball game yet. So giving up that easy basket on the press really hurts. 101 to play. How about this? NC State in the first half down 29-15. And somehow... Herb Sendak able to make the right moves, putting Bitterman on Plavik in the second half. Plavik with five threes in the first half. He has only taken three shots in this entire second half. And you know that's not by design. He'll take them if he can see them, but Bitterman has smothered him. That's sore, hitting the free throw. You know, the other aspect of it is NC State just appeared to be passive and indecisive as they tried to figure out the changing defenses of Charlotte. But once they got the solution, they started to attack and they started to feel very comfortable on offensive end. And Charlotte turns it over. Now when this game is finished, we will take you out to the South East Louisiana Oklahoma State game. Which is a barn burner. Bitterman wheels it back, 45 seconds to go. Well, Charlotte trying to foul. They can't even get to a guy to foul. They're trying to go after the ball. It's still no call. All right, the Chevrolet players of the game. We give it to Julius Hodge. What a line. 19 points, 9 assists, 7 rebounds. But Cameron Bitterman is like... 1-1-A one and one a because of the defense he played on Plavik, Eddie Baston, 13 points, 8 rebounds. 
for the 49ers. As Bitterman heads to the free throw line. NC State doing a nice job with their free throw shooting, 14 of 16. As Bitterman gets the first one to go. Bitterman, all of his points coming in the second half. Misses the second, Bazin with the rebound, 34 seconds to go. Twenty-eight point two remaining in the second half. NC State seventy-one, Charlotte sixty-three. Seventy-one, sixty-three. NC State a ten, leading Charlotte a seven. Gus Johnson, Len Elmore, with you. What a day for Julius Hodge, leading his team back. Nineteen points, nine assists, seven rebounds. The score was tied at 59 apiece with three and a half minutes left. NC State has outscored Charlotte 12-4 since with five different players scoring for the Wolfpack. And uh, it's safe to say we can advance the Wolfpack. I think so. I mean, three-possession ball game. 26 seconds left. Charlotte in the penalty. So they have to foul. And NC State has to miss an awful lot of free throws, which... They don't. And it's a pretty good free throw shooting team. At least some of their top guys, almost 70%. Into the game for Charlotte, number 21, Chris Sager. And right after this one is finished, we will take you out to the Southeast Louisiana Oklahoma State game. Oklahoma State right now up by four with four minutes to go. Up to Maul with nine points. All five NC State starters in double figures. They get 10 points for Eftemov. Gold wire in the corner. Charlotte Lenny looked so good early on, but they weren't able to sustain it. Well, I think it kind of surprised them. They went out to that lead, and then when NC State started roaring back at them, again, it seemed as though Charlotte started to play not to lose instead of playing to win. And that happens when you've been on a long losing streak and you see a team coming back at you and you start making mistakes, you start to think in your mind, uh-oh, here we go again, and you try to figure out ways to prevent yourself from losing instead of going out and fighting it and, and being the aggressor and winning the game. So Withers fouls out with 15 points. For the 49ers as a couple of substitutes come into the game. How about the ACC? It is the number one conference in the country. NC State 7-9 in ACC play, and you really can't consider this win an upset against the seventh-seeded 49ers from Charlotte. Again, the uh, 49ers had a share of the Conference USA regular season title, 21 wins. NC State with 19 wins, but they were further down in the ACC standings, but we know how tough the ACC is. Four seconds remaining. Charlotte, 28% from the field in the second half. That tells the story. And Julius Hodge dribbles out the clock. What a game, 19, 9, and 7. And NC State wins it. 75-63. Now let's go to Southeast Louisiana and Oklahoma State. All right, Gus Johnson, thanks very much. So the Wolfpack advance, and North Carolina State will play the winner of the UConn Central Florida game. Greg Gumbel, Clark Kellogg, Seth Davis back here. They're in a timeout, and we will get to them shortly. you got to give Charlotte all kinds of credit for what they accomplished today. North Carolina State, you mean? Yes. Yes. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> sure. A strong 30 minutes after being down 14 in the first half. Never mind. Let's take you to Oklahoma City, Craig and Bob. 